Uh, we're gonna talk today a little bit about uh, the proper ring setting on these Browning Auto 5s. We pulled a couple guns out of our inventory here. I haven't really looked at them to see what's what with them here and get the tags off. Uh, start off with the, uh, let's start with the Light 20. Okay, it's a Light 20, it's a newer model with a flat knob. Nice little gun. Uh, kind of looks like one I have restored. It looks like a factory new gun. Anyway, let's check the rings on this. Uh, get a lot of calls from a lot of people about uh, the proper ring setting uh, on these Auto 5s. And uh, it's kind of critical that you get them right. Uh, they work good when they're set right. If they're not, they're kind of iffy. Uh, this gun is uh, set up right now for heavy loads. And the magazine tube seems a little dry to me. It is kind of dry. You got to keep a little oil on just for kicks. Let's leave it set on the heavy setting. Put our barrel back on here. Warm back on. Now this one has inside, has the uh, ring setting diagram. Uh, Browning uh, Service Department recommends not leaving that in there. Uh, the first thing they do down Browning when I was there, they would take a big rasp and just take that thing out because it has a tendency to ball up and gall up into the action, the recoil spring. So um, they get rid of that thing. They say, you know, it's kind of handy to have there. But So anyway, <clears throat> this gun is now set for heavy loads. So just for kicks, let's shoot some light stuff in. I'm shooting just some real light, light grammed uh, uh, Winchester promotional stuff. I'm, let's just see if it'll shoot it. And... Uh, this is a newer gun with a speed load. Very nice. And let's just try it. That shot them just fine. And that's a pretty light load. Uh, my theory on these ring settings is always start with the heavy load. Then try and shoot your gun and see how it does. This ain't really ejecting them. They really spit out really well. And uh, if it shoots a... Uh, uh, you know those light loads went on the heavy setting, you know if it ain't broke don't fix it leave it that way now if you shoot it and it fails to eject Or won't feed That's uh, off times because of a dry magazine tube and this one was a little dry wasn't bad but, uh, I'd like to see a little more oil on it than it was, but let's Here's let's let's look at these ring settings here and This one's a little tighter than I like I've got a tool that expands this bronze out a little bit so it doesn't go on so tight. That's one reason they, they fail to work quite often. And I kind of suspect this uh, recoil spring has probably collapsed. It kind of looks to me like it is. Let's uh, let's put a new recoil spring in just, just to see what happens. Uh, uh, if you keep a good recoil spring in your gun, it'll really tame it way down. The recoil will be so much lighter. And this looks to me like it's collapsed. So I'm going to run in here and pick up a new spring. The way I tell if they're collapsed or not, I just compare them with a new one. That tells me everything. Just let me go get it. And I compare it with the old one. Look at that. It's about an inch shorter. That uh, spring is collapsed. You can kind of tell too because it's got a curve to it. Get rid of that thing. Let's put a new uh, recoil spring on it. Just for the heck of it. Let's set it up for heavy loads again. See if it'll function with heavy loads. I'm still not going to put any uh, oil on the magazine tube. I'm going to leave it. Uh, it's got a little bit on it. It's not real dry, but it doesn't have as much on it as I prefer. And just for kicks, let's see with this new recoil spring if it will spit out those light cheap Winchester Walmart special promotional loads. If it'll eject those. It'll, it'll work with anything. And um, they're pretty light. So now we're set for the heavy loads. We have a new recoil spring in the gun. And uh, let me get my magic muffs on. I have enough ringing in my ears as it is. Shooting a lot of guns without muffs, flying airplanes, it all takes its toll. Now at my age, I'm, I, I'm tired of the ring, but it's there. Anyway, here we go. Let's load it up. Light loads. Set on the heavy setting. It might work, it might not, I don't know. Yeah, it works just fine. Uh, if it's uh, if it's working and it's set on those heavy loads, leave it alone. Uh, if it's not working, now let me show you the setting. If it's not working, set for the heavy loads and you're shooting light stuff in it, 
Uh, you need to set your rings properly. Uh, let's talk about these ring settings again here. All right, here we go. Now, to shoot the heavy loads, start like this. You have this steel ring, friction ring they call it. Put it on, bevel up. You have your bronze ring, and it has a bevel on it. Put it on, bevel up. And that's set now for heavy loads. That's just the way, the way we just now shot it. Now, to set it for light loads, do this. Take this uh, steel friction ring off. You can put it in your pocket. And then your wife will yell at you because you're going to leave it in your pocket. And it's going to go through the washer and mess up her washer. Uh, uh, you just want to get rid of it. Or just do like you're supposed to do. Just store it underneath the spring. Turn it with the bevel down. And put your recoil spring back on. This is just a storage is all that is. You can put it in your pocket, but that's where you're going to lose it. Uh, I'll talk about these Magnum guns here in a little bit. Half those I buy are missing rings, and I'll tell you why. Anyway, now it's set for light loads. But I'm going to go ahead and just set it. When I, sit, when I service these guns, or when I sell them, I just, I don't know, for some reason at Browning, they always did the same way. They, they always uh, set them up for heavy loads. So, if it'll function with heavy loads, uh, shooting the light stuff, let it go. Now I'm going to put a drop of motor oil on here because uh, this gun's going back into uh, inventory. And I anticipate selling it very shortly because it's a sweet little gun. Oh, it shoots so nice. Uh, nothing, nothing like a, a 520 gauge. Yeah, if, it, if you can't get your barrel on, rotate your spring. That's usually what it's hitting on. All right, this gun is done. We shot it. We talked about the ring settings. Uh, it's set back up for heavy loads. I can feel it's kind of, you know. Anyway, good to go. All right, let's talk about a Magnum. I have a Mag 20. Oh. Mag 20s have flattened off stocks. Uh, nice little gun. Uh, this one hasn't been blued or anything. It's got some crazing in the stock. It's got a little blue wear. I'm not going to blue it or anything. It's uh, good shape the way it is. We'll just sell it as is. Uh, all right, we're going to look at the ring setting on this. All right. Off. Okay, here we go. Now, In a, in a mag 20 if all the rings are and half of my buy I declare there's missing rings about every time and I'll show you why that is in a little bit you have all together three friction rings you have two bronze pieces now to set this gun up for uh, three inch loads you do just kind of like you did on with the other one you put your steel ring on to start with on top of your recoil spring bevel up bevel up put on a bronze piece they're beveled on both sides so you can't go wrong either way now we're ready for another steel friction ring this one goes bevel down as you can see both those steel rings are, are working against that bronze piece that's where you want it. now I'm gonna put another steel ring on bevel up then we're going to put our bronze piece back on either way. They're available both sides. Now, what that gives you is when you shoot this gun, it'll actually be uh, the bronze pieces are going to be squeezed out from two different angles there, and which will slow the you know the travel of the barrel down. Now, just for kicks on this one, let's see what it'll shoot. Uh, it's set for three inch now. I always recommend on these guns. There again, set it for the heavy load, the heaviest setting, and, and try it. If it works fine, I kind of doubt that this one will with the light stuff. It'll shoot this stuff, it'll shoot anything. And uh, all right, let's load it up. All right, here's the light stuff. We're feeding nicely in there. All these guns have the speed load in them. All right, so we're set for three inch loads. We have uh, the light grammed. Let's see what it does. Oh, 
look at that. It didn't eject. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. There it is. Now that's... I shot one the other day with this light stuff. Even after putting a new uh, friction ring in it. And it uh, still functioned. But uh, that one didn't shoot. See that? It's not ejecting. So... Let's... Uh, Let's try something. Let's set it up for two and three quarter rounds. Now, here. Well, I got it set up for three inch. Just for the heck of it. Let's see if it ejects. Uh, see if I can kind of eject it over towards the camera. Whoa, look at that. A malfunction. You know what that probably is from? Probably because the magazine tube is dry. The biggest reason that A5s fail to eject and feed is because of a dry magazine tube. And I didn't oil this one. That's uh just for the heck of it, let's see what happens. Let's pull it out here. There's our let's put a couple yeah this tube's pretty dry. You gotta keep a little and I recommend synthetic motor oil on. There's just a couple drops of motor oil. Okay, let's see if that makes any difference. Uh, most of the time it will. Because I was shooting a 3 inch there. And as you see, it failed to eject. Probably because of the dry tube. Alright. Alright, so uh, we're set back for the, the 3 inch uh, rounds. Let's put a another three inch round through here and see and this will tell us what it's doing we'll just shoot one see what it does all right eject it the dry magazine tube that's the reason most a5s fail to work whether it be two or three quarter or three inch but as you see it ejected just fine now okay let's uh let's set it up for light stuff uh the question is, can you shoot light two and three quarter stuff in these guns? And the answer is, sometimes, usually, not necessarily always, they were designed for three inch. But let's uh, let's remove some rings. What we're going to leave on here to shoot this light stuff, we're going to leave uh, one steel ring, bevel up. We're going to put on one bronze ring. Now. The barrel has a bevel in it. The barrel ring here, here's a bevel. So it's also going to be squeezing on this bronze piece from piece from both sides. Now, in the two and three quarter guns, remember we put our ring down under the spring to store it? Well, you can't do that with these. These you got to put in your pocket so you can lose them. That's why when I buy these, they're usually short on those rings. Uh, I own, I got a lot of rings in the shop because I use a lot. So now, let's see, now, now you wouldn't want to shoot this with the uh, uh, 3 inch because it, it'll work, but it's going to really thump you because it's set for light loads. But let's just see, did I put a drop of oil on that? No, let's put a drop of oil on it too. It's kind of, this tube's a little dry. Just a couple drops. I can't remember if I put oil on or not. It doesn't look like I did. Spin this, there you go, just a couple drops. A synthetic motor oil. Not rim oil, not browning oil, not gun oil, but motor oil. You want something that's got some lubrication. Alright, now we're set for light loads. So the question is, will it shoot this light promotional stuff? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, these, these 20 mags, a lot of the gunsmiths at Browning just, I don't know, they didn't care for them. They fought those things. I saw some of those guys come out of the shooting tunnel so frustrated because they couldn't make these things work. Uh, and I asked them, you know, so you guys like these or not? And they said, well, if you got one and it's working, it's, you know, they're good. If it doesn't, they just, they're a problem. But let's just see for the howl of it here if this gun will shoot uh, the light uh, two and three quarter stuff. Shoots them just fine. So. And, and I must say the recoil was very mild on that because these have a little heavier <clears throat> spring on them. Uh, the recoil spring is a little heavier. 
And uh, this was very mild shooting. What a sweet little guy. Uh, but there again, so there we are. Uh, if you're going to shoot the heavy stuff, always set it for, um, the, if you're going to shoot the three inch stuff, make sure you've got it set for the heavy, heavy loads. It'll probably function just fine if you got it set for light loads, but it's going to beat you up something terrible. So let's uh, put our rings back on here. Remember again, your bronze friction ring, steel ring, bevel up. Your bronze, bronze ring, in any way, any way, you, any way you want. Your next steel ring, bevel down, so it works on against that bronze piece. All right, the next one, next steel ring goes bevel up, and then your bronze piece. So with the barrel on here, the taper in the barrel, uh, there it's going to be squeezing on both of these bronze pieces to slow that barrel travel down. Now there again. Uh, if you have this set for heavy loads, and uh, it'll shoot the uh, the light stuff, then there again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go ahead. I always set it for the heaviest loads and try that first. Then if it doesn't function, put a drop of motor oil on there and set your rings properly. And that's really all there is to it. Now this is a 20 gauge Magnum here. That's a two and three quarter gun. The 12 gauge are the same. They're just the rings are just a little bigger, but they're the same. So. There you go. We've talked about the ring setting and uh, the proper way to set them up. And don't forget that drop or two of uh, synthetic motor oil under that bronze piece. And these things will probably work every time. I fix a lot of these guns right over the telephone. When they call me, the first thing I ask them, when they say they got a A5, they call up and say, I got this here A5 and it's hanging up on me. Well, I say, put a couple drops of motor oil under the bronze rings and try that. If that doesn't work, then you need me. 90% of the time I never hear from them again because they fix their own gun. I fix it over the phone. I don't know why I don't send those guys a, uh, an invoice like those lawyers do out there, but uh, that's the way it is. So anyway, here we go. Uh, that's, that's all you need to know to make your A5 function and function properly.